Hello, I'm Jim Shropshire, course director for PDS2 here at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health. And today I'd like to demonstrate um, the regional physical exam of the head and neck. This is the fourth in our series of regional physical exam videos. Mary has agreed to be our patient today. Uh, Mary, may we demonstrate a head and neck examination today sure. on you? Thank you very much. Um, as always, when we start our physical examination, we'd like to assess for our patient's comfort. Um, and uh, the room uh, it needs to be in the appropriate temperature and we need to have appropriate privacy as our door is closed. We also want to make sure we have all the tools that we need, including our auto-ophthalmoscope, um, which is a wall-mounted device, speculums uh, for looking in the ear and nose, and then also some materials that we have for examination of the eyes. Before we start with the physical examination, we always want to remember to wash our hands. So Mary, in order to start our exam today, I'd like to start just by inspecting and palpating, starting at the top. Okay. And um, I'm going to just notice that Mary is wearing glasses. Um, I'm going to notice the pattern of her hair and look for any um, areas of decreased hair growth or thinning. Um, we want to palpate the hair and feeling for uh, the thickness of the hair or thinness of the hair. We also inspect for skin lesions, uh, blemishes, scars um, that you may see on Mary's face. Um, we will palpate the skull, briefly feeling for uh, any lesions or lumps. And then um, move on uh, to testing of the eyes. And I'd like to start off just by testing your visual acuity. Okay. We can test visual acuity both close and near vision um, in the primary care setting. And for this, I'm gonna start with the close vision. Mary, would you hold this card for me about 14 inches or so in front? And then I'm gonna ask you to close one, or cover one eye mm -hmm. with your left hand. And then read for me, if you would, the lowest line that you can read on this card. 48739. Excellent. And that corresponds to 2020 vision. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So we'll switch our hands around. And what's the lowest line you can read? 48739. Excellent. Distance vision using a Snellen chart is also uh, sometimes done, which we won't demonstrate today. Um, next, I'd like to move to uh, visual field testing. And in order to do visual field testing, we're going to use a method called confrontation. And that involves um, really testing your visual fields against the patient's visual fields. So I'm going to position myself about two feet in front of you here. And then um, I'd like you just to look in my eyes, and I'll return your gaze. And then I'm going to put my hands up in either the upper or lower quadrants and um, ask you to tell me if you see one of them moving. To the left. Okay. To my left. To my right. Okay, very good. And then again here. To my right. Left. <laughs> and here. To my right. Very good. And uh, of course, it's important for you to know that you have intact visual fields uh, to be able to uh, make that examination accurate. And that looked very normal. Again, we want to test in the upper outer quadrants uh, on visual field testing. Um, Next, I'd like to um, just do an eye inspection. And in order to do this, Mary, I'm going to ask that you slip your glasses off if you would. Sometimes you can have your patient hold their glasses and put them in their lap. Today, I think I'm going to ask Mary that I just put these off to the side for safekeeping. So Mary, I'm going to start by inspecting and just kind of looking at your eyes. I'm looking at the eyebrows, the eyelashes. Um, I'm looking at the color of the sclera or the white of the eye. I'm looking at the pupils and inspecting the pupils for symmetry or, or asymmetry. We also want to look at the conjunctiva. I'm just going to touch down here at the bottom part of, of your cheek and your eye and gently um, lift down to see the conjunctiva, the, the inner surface called the palpebral conjunctiva. Um, and with all of this, we're looking for redness. We're looking for asymmetry. Um, we're looking for uh, lesions or um, abnormalities. After inspection, uh, we're going to test your pupils. And in order to do this, I'd like to get the light on the wall here. 
Sometimes you can use a pen light uh, from your pocket. I'm going to use the wall-mounted um, otoscope. Uh, it's good to be familiar with how your um, otoscope or light source works. This one has a dimmer dial uh, on the handle, which allows us to make it very bright or not so, uh, depending on uh, your purpose. Uh, in order to check for um, our pupillary reaction to light, I'm going to bring the light in from the outside and just have you look at my nose. And as I bring the light in, I watch for a constriction of the pupil as the light strikes her pupil on this side. And then I'm going to look for the consensual reaction, which involves looking at her opposite eye that I'm shining the light in, and watch for that similar reaction. Sometimes it helps to dim the lights a little bit to make it more obvious what's happening with a pupillary response. And then also do the same on the other side. So again, look at my nose, and then as I shine the light on this side, I look for constriction on her right eye, and I do it again watching her left pupil and watch for that consensual response. Another pupillary reaction is the near reaction and uh, or near response. And I'm going to ask you to look, um, if you would, um, at the corner of the room. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put my finger about 10 inches from your nose. And I want you to look far and then focus in on my finger. And I, again, look far and then look, focus in on my finger. And we see two reactions. One of them is a convergence, and the other is accommodation as the eyes come together and the pupils constrict. Next, I'd like to test for um, extraocular muscles. And we're going to do this uh, using the H pattern as described in the text. And Mary, what I'd like you to do is just watch my finger. I'm going to start here in the middle, move to the side. And then I'll move from the side up and down, and then across the center, up and down. And the H pattern allows you to check each of the extraocular muscles. These will be discussed later in the cranial nerve uh, portion of the video.